participation of citizens must be a priority for contemporary democracies. In this program, we will be talking about good practices in public participation from the perspective of mass participation, meaning that of thousands or hundreds of people, thanks to technology and the ever-present social media platforms. We will be analyzing how the model of mass participation works in the framework of the European Union, and to do so, we will be thinking about a specific example of a youth, innovative, dynamic company, the mission of which is to encourage these kinds of initiatives in participatory democracy. I'm talking about Make.org, a European neutral and independent organization, the CEO of which will be interviewed by Antonio Lopez Peláez, Professor of Social Services and Social Law at UNED. Welcome to you all to this new program of the Participatory Group, this project that has been going on for four years between UNED and the City Council of Madrid to analyze different participatory experiences, how to enhance them, how to create a repository of training for public participation and how to tackle different levels of participation. Today, we are extremely lucky. We're always lucky, but today even more so because in the world where we find ourselves of social media and dynamics where thousands of people are expressing their opinion at the same time. There's a facet of participation that we haven't brought up a lot before. I'm talking about mass participation, the participation of thousands of people, for instance, the European youth. This participation is only possible through new technologies and the fundamental role, the essential role of social media. There are many advanced institutions and companies in this regard. Javier Morales is here with us today in charge of projects of participatory democracy in a very innovative company, Make.org, with uh, headquarters in Brussels and offices around the European Union. First of all, Javier, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for interviewing me. First of all, we want to ask you something that our audience wants to know. What is mass participation? What we understand by mass participation is a level of participation that is enough to become truly representative of a social group. And by social group, I mean at local level or regional level or even national or European level, regardless of the level we count on the representation of a population. In terms of figures, we'd be talking about around 10,000 inhabitants, especially at local level, but that is the minimum figure. So when we are talking about representation, it's here you would be using the total of the sample, the whole object of study. What tools do you use? How do you tackle this? Well, representation comes with two main challenges. The first one is technical. When you want to make 200,000, 1 million people participate, you need to count on tools and a digital platform that are technically prepared to gather 5,000, 10,000 connections at the same time. Sometimes you want to buy a ticket for a concert and the website collapses because the system is overloaded. So when you want mass participation, you need to guarantee the technical feasibility. Then there's the communication aspect of it with regards to the capacity to mobilize hundreds of thousands of people. And that's where social media comes into play because that's where people engage, interact. It's the place to be. And you can find there thousands of people, even millions of people, whereas more traditional mobilization means like written press or even television are increasingly limited in terms of communication. Yes, of course, the biggest difference, we've talked about mass participation in other programs, but the most significant difference is that this social environment makes users stakeholders their dynamic is not that of reception it's not passive they produce their own content they make content they intervene in social media so social media with regards to the radio like us today or other conventional channels like television they've changed because of social media 
I'd say that mass participation has started in the realm of consumption. I agree, I think that you are right. Yes, there is a, an aspect of interaction that came up with IT and the internet as a whole, but specifically in social media. And yes, of course, in WhatsApp, you can create surveys. I know this is a very basic feature, but on Facebook, you can react, you can comment other people's posts. Yes, there's a sort of genesis of interaction, proactivity and content creation that, of course, we use as a support in our practices and our methodology so that we can redirect this energy towards citizen participation and public matters and collective decisions. In reality, our youth, our world is in a completely different environment. If they are present on social media, if they are commenting, liking, creating content, if they are engaging and interacting with others and becoming leaders, dynamizing spaces, then really mass participation through the digital world and social media is not unknown to the youth. They've used it one million times to make to share their opinions about many other things that have nothing to do with their condition of citizens. So your focus on mass participation is really suitable for the kind of society that we live in. Yes, I think that a very important difference between our platform specifically and other social media is that what we try to do precisely is to foster the gathering of different opinions. We try to open up matters that are of public interest, like for instance, equality between men and women, any other social matter, and to allow people with differing opinions to expose them and to hear, to have to listen to opinions that you don't agree with, whereas social media algorithms create circles of feedback where you are simply exposed to your same opinion that contributes to polarization. We try to break with this polarization, take people outside their comfort zone, their social media algorithm, and we invite them to confront their ideas to those of other people. And regardless of all of this, to have a constructive debate and reach consensus. It's true that in such a polarized society like ours, it's important to come out of our comfort zone through platforms and mechanisms. And it's a problem because polarization comes from the repetition of the same messages, self-reassurance, building a bridge between different interest groups, building bridges to rationalize, to help us share our opinion, exchange in a different environment, different context, we think that this is fundamental in social, in public participation and social media allows us to find those spaces for consensus and establish environments that go beyond self-affirmation. This is part of the genesis of the new model of participation of digital societies. Javier, I hope that this is clear to our audience and that they resonate with this because all of our audience are receiving surveys and sharing their opinion and creating content on social media with their own behavior. Once we understand this and how to frame this debate beyond self-interests of different groups, what good experiences might you share with us so that our audience understands the potential of your project? Well, I think that the most significant experience that I can mention is one that is fairly recent. Our EU Hope campaign launched in May 2023. This is a campaign that is very close to our heart. It's the first consultation that is pan-European and multilingual. We have opened up a participatory platform available in 22 languages and in 27 countries of the European Union and we've allowed millions of youth from the whole European continent to talk about what, how they perceive Europe in the future, what they want from the European Union, from the European institutions, and the idea behind this campaign is precisely to foster engagement for the European elections. 
taking place in the summer of 2024. It's important to get the youth involved because unfortunately they are the ones participating the least in elections. We want to mobilize them to give them a space for self-expression. It was a multilingual platform where everybody was understanding each other even though they were using different languages thanks to simultaneous translation. We thought that it was even more important given the geopolitical context that we are living with very real threats of manipulation, misinformation. We saw this in Slovakia recently, fake news. This has been a very significant experience because of the scale and scope of this platform. Millions of young Europeans participated. We want to achieve European participation at large scale, at the heart of the European Union vision. I find this fascinating. Those of you listening will know that I'm a professor of social work and this has a lot to do with the lack of sense of belonging to European institutions. European elections see normally a much lower turnout than national elections. So both with the European Parliament and European Commission, we don't see that citizen involvement. It's important to raise awareness with regards to common topics, joint topics that can only be solved through participation by putting certain topics on the public agenda table. The project that you were mentioning with simultaneous translation with 22 languages for the youth to express their ideas is necessary and also it counteracts the definition of eco chambers and polarization to try to hinder your enemy through fake news and misinformation. This is a very fascinating topic. Tell us about the response of the European youth. Well, participation has been massive. We've worked with our partner, the European Federalist Youth Association. And what's most interesting is that they would complement what we were lacking, maybe, which is that work on site in the field, mobilization through gatherings, meetings, efforts. And it's true that the youth have responded really well in a very constructive way especially because what we see often or what the media conveys to us is that society is very polarized people cannot are not able to reach agreements people argue but what we've seen through this consultation is that there are many issues for which left-wing and right-wing youth can agree. They can agree on big priorities. I invite any of you listening to us to visit eurohope.org. As I was saying, this was a very constructive mass process with that willingness because the youth want to participate in politics. They have so much to say, but they have no or less trust in those elected politicians that are in parliament, political parties, but they are mobilized. They have that willingness to participate, to exert their citizenship, but they don't want to do it through traditional means of representation. So that's where our methodology at make.org is interesting because it allows them to exercise their citizen rights outside of traditional means and channels. It's about going to search for the youth where they are present, the internet, social media. We cannot make consultations. I mean, everything is compatible at the end of the day, but we cannot carry out consultations if we don't think about where the youth are. In social services, it's the same thing. We need to look for those spaces of interaction. And this generation has a completely different model of communication and participation. I find it very interesting when you say that the youth is worried about the collective because the collective impacts them. Another totally different thing are the interests that are in contraposition in our society. And 
their perception of our elected representatives, there's a level of dissatisfaction, lack of trust, but maybe participation is the right strategy to get them involved again in the participatory group. Really, when we carry out participatory exercises that are intensive and collaborative and well-designed, they lead to outcomes depending on the agreements reached by citizens. They do reinforce coexistence sustainability and efficiency of the solutions reached and we are making decisions within our scope of possibilities it's not detached from us so you were sharing your website and our audience can look up the outcomes but what outcomes would you mention in terms of participation or from that perspective well from the perspective of participation something that caught my attention was the diversity of consensual ideas. We have analysis methodologies helping us identify those large ideas that many social groups stand behind and the largest controversies as well. The ideas, the actions that see a lot of support, many votes for but also many votes against them. So we classify them as controversies. What personally surprised me most was that diversity of themes, of topics, because we might reduce our youth to certain political positions and topics like ecology or progressive ideas, but there is diversity even within the same age groups, which doesn't mean that they lack the capacity to reach agreements and consensus. Specifically with regards to outcomes, I'd like to say that this diversity of topics really encompasses many different social matters that are very current. Of course, the energy transition, ecology, the environment has a key role that wasn't a surprise to us, but we need to remind you of it. Behind the energy transition or ecological transition, we've seen the development of uh, train connections between European countries and the youth are not asking for abstract concepts but specific measures. For instance, the European railway network. Other topics have nothing to do with the ecology and are focused on migration. There are many controversies but also many consensus. So we can move forward as a society. Many other topics include healthcare, reinforcing our healthcare systems, education. The youth have many ideas about what the educational system needs in the 21st century. Of course, many gender equality topics, many topics with regards to LGBT rights. There's a wide range of topics, so we cannot keep limiting or reducing our youth to one only topic, one ideological position. We need to give them the floor because they have many specific ideas to move forward. That catches my attention a lot because in the dynamic of polarization people will ask you, are you in my team or their team? If not, shut up. But instead here we are thinking about questions like, what do you think? What would you like to do? That's why I find it so interesting that they are talking about uh, railway systems. There's a lot of Erasmus students, both in Spain and the other countries in Europe. So mobility, the use of public resources, the possibility to travel to other countries. And this is very largely demanded by our youth. We think about the Bologna agreement. That was a huge progress. But I totally agree with what you are saying. For those listening to us, it's important that we realize the super diversity of ideas, the differences in, in objectives and goals and new demands that intensify even if they existed before. They intensify given the needs of the youth that have different concerns, who commute differently. The youth are the future, people say, but they are also the present. They're already here. What do you mean when you say the new generation? The new generation is already four years old, protected. So, with regards to the mass scale of this project, would you say there's a collective awareness raising among the youth participating? Yes, of course, the matter of, of awareness raising, civil and uh, political awareness raising is among our missions. We are a platform 
to allow for participation. The first objective that we've got is the exercise of participation, sharing ideas, saying I agree, I don't, but what is underlying, what is behind our platform is exercising our role as citizens, our practices, our citizens of being interested, having an opinion, getting involved about collective matters because they impact my life. This may seem a very basic thing. It's not something we're born with. We need to learn it, that citizen muscle, as we call it. As human beings, we live in communities, as collectives, and we need to develop that muscle. We need to learn how to exercise our rights as citizens. And that's why there are so many roles in civic education in France and other countries. I'm not sure about Spain, but at the end of the day, this job is about building citizens, not only training people to how to participate, but building citizens, creating citizens, developing that citizen muscle is what we try to foster through our platform. We want people to develop this practice organically. This interest, this constant questioning the information that they're receiving and listening to what other people are saying. It's about creating the breeding ground for democratic governability and mass European participation. We at make.org are convinced that it's the backbone of our democracy. Having citizens who are willing to mobilize and to participate in their communities. Thank you so much, Javier. I think that this is a wonderful way to conclude our program. It's true that there's no participation without democracy and there's no well-being since social welfare is based on the, our capacity to define collectively what we want to tackle, what we cover, what we leave out. The fact that the European youth counts on platforms w through which they can achieve consensus, reach consensus in spaces for dialogue, this will allow them to self-reflect on their own conditions because our youth in Europe have different healthcare systems. They might agree with uh, having a healthcare social floor that is dignified and at European level. Our European youth is looking for cooperation spaces and your platform has a huge potential in that regard. Just to conclude, would you like to tell us about any other project in one minute? I think it's interesting to talk about our trajectory at European level, even more so in Eastern Europe. A project that comes to mind is that of Germany and the Czech Republic. It was a cross-border project a consultation, a parallel consultation in two regions, one in Germany and one in the Czech Republic. The idea behind this project was to establish this cross-border dialogue between German and Czech youngsters. I mean, it's what we would be doing some years later with Eurohope, the project that I mentioned before, but a bit of an experiment at a reduced scale with this cross-border dialogue, it was truly insightful. First of all, we asked them about uh, Europe, about the European Union policy. At the end of the day, citizens want solutions, implementation of specific practices, and the administrative side is something that is pretty irrelevant to them. I think it might be a taboo to get rid of. I hope we can the matter of cross-border dialogue. Yes, between the Czech Republic and Germany, there is a border, but this is a region that shares many ideological values, the same economic community. Many companies operate in the two countries, so they do share interests in spite of the different administrative systems, the fact that they are two separate countries. I still found it 
a wonderful exercise, a wonderful example of European integration and our capacity for coordination and mobilization of our youth because at the end of the day, our youth, and I am 26 years old, I'm talking as a, as a youngster myself, I consider that I'm still young. I think that many people want this cross-border multilingual Europe Many youngsters live in this reality. We need spaces that materialize this cooperation tangibly. We are already coexisting. The European Union is already a reality. I was very pleasantly surprised by this exercise that helped us prepare for the largest scale consultation that we've just carried out. Thank you very much, Javier. These are the three takeaways, mass participation, cross-border participation, and spaces for consensus among groups of the population at European level, at the wider scope, we can jointly find solutions. Thank you very much, Javier. I hope that we can interview you soon on another occasion. It's been fascinating to hear what you had to say. Thank you, Antonio, I'm at your disposal whenever you want me to. Let's conclude this new program of the series, Outlooks on Public Participation in which we have listened to Javier from make.org talking about European Union mass participation. Thank you very much. See you soon.